Today I'm doing a swamp cooler test, or an extreme test on a swamp cooler, it's also called an evaporator cooler. So today it's going to be 111 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 45 degrees Celsius. Humidity levels are between 25% and 15%, depending what part of the day it is, the hotter it gets, the less humidity there is. I have the Champion Swamp Cooler, it is rated for a maximum square footage of 600 square feet. This house is about 1,500 square feet, so it is extremely undersized, though I have a lot of rooms closed off to make it around 600 square feet. The airflow out of here, if you feel it, there's a lot of airflow, though it's not quite enough to give a good airflow through the windows that you have open on the opposite sides of the house that side and that side to be exact, you can get air to go out of the house windows, it's just not a decent amount. You want as much air as possible leaving the windows to get a good batch of the swamp cooler's cool air to go into the room, but in this case, it doesn't quite have enough oomph to do that, but it does do the job. Either way, right now it is, let's open up the blinds. It's 88 degrees Fahrenheit outside right now. It's going to get a lot hotter. We're blowing in about, we're blowing in about roughly, you can't even see for some reason, 65% humidity. And for temperature, it's hovering around 78 degrees right now, but it's more humid because it is morning. It's only nine in the morning right now. Either way, I'll get back to you this afternoon to see what exactly the Swamp Cooler is able to do. By the way, my house is a mobile home from the 1970s, so it doesn't have the best insulation. By the way, this is what my unit looks like. On the outside, it's relatively quiet. I got my unit for free. You're supposed to repaint these every once in a while because they can get rusty, but most people, including me, don't do that because it's just a lot of work. But that's alright. You have to sand it all down and repaint it. Either way, these machines need to sit on a pedestal like mine is, and why? Well, they don't hook in quite like a window air conditioning unit. It's a little bit too heavy for that. Either way, you can see there are filters on the inside of the machine, and those filters are called Aspen filters. This is what they look like. They are sort of like a plant filter, or a, just a bunch of weeds, basically, and the water goes through the filter and it sucks the air through the water covered filter and it cools down the air. I don't know the exact science behind it, but it's basically like a sweating machine. How you sweat, it makes you feel cooler. That's basically what the machine's doing. It's sweating and cooling down the air. Here is how the inside of the machine looks. You have a big round circular fan right here and then you have a water pump sucking water up from the pan up a tube here all the way to the top and it's dispensing water into a little trough right there right there and right there and the trough has holes in it you can see the holes right there and it's all along here they can get rusted out and get filled up with gunk but it has holes to distribute the water in my case it is rotting so the holes i mean the whole thing broke off over there. Either way, how the water gets in is there is a float, all right, and the float is hooked up to a valve, which is hooked up to a quarter inch pipe. And basically, when the water is too low, it turns on. When the water is high enough, it turns off. I have bent my float down so the water turns off earlier, so there's less water inside the machine because it was leaking. And, well, that has fixed the nothing. As you can see, it is still leaking. If you're wondering how you hook the quarter inch pipe up to water, what you do is you hook the quarter inch pipe into one of these things, and then you hook it onto one of these. All right, this is a hose bib, by the way. And then this is also a hose bib on the bottom, but on the side, it is a quarter inch pipe hookup. And that's what I got. It is a kit from Home Depot. By the way, you have to have the hose, the original hose, turned on for this to work. And before you turn this on, hook up the quarter inch pipe because there is no shutoff for the quarter inch pipe besides this, and you'll have water spraying out the side. But of course, you still have the on and off for the bottom. It works perfectly fine. 
Alright, right now it is 10.30 a.m. It is 95 degrees outside, and the swamp cooler is blowing in approximately 79 degree air. In my bedroom, I inserted a fan to help suck air out of the window. Sure, with the window open, I was getting air out. It was just not quite a lot, and this room would get hotter than the rest of the house. So I'm trying to help it along with a fan today. Temperature in here right now is about 82 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature inside the living room is slightly cooler. It's around 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, the thermometer plastic is broken, but it still shows you it is 78 degrees. Or about roughly 30, no, 20, 26 Celsius roughly. And inside of a room without the swamp cooler air, it is around 88 degrees Fahrenheit. It's now 11.26 a.m. and it is 100 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Swamp cooler is blowing in approximately 60 or 58% humidity. And it's blowing in 81 degree air roughly. My bedroom is around 83 degrees Fahrenheit. The living room is around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The room without the swamp cooler air is around 88 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, but somehow it actually feels cooler than the other room, maybe due to the lack of humidity. Alright, it is 11.30pm right now. It's a humongous skip in time. I know I was busy doing things and I completely forgot about this. Either way, right now it is 84 degrees Fahrenheit inside the living room. Outside, where the swamp cooler is, it is also 84 degrees Fahrenheit. The swamp cooler is blowing in around 75 degree air. My bedroom is around 86 degrees Fahrenheit. The room without the evaporator cooler is around 98 degrees Fahrenheit. So, the evaporator cooler is cooling the room down around 20 degrees compared to the rest of the house. Although it got dark at 7 p.m. It is now 11 p.m. So that's four hours it's been dark and cooling down. So I don't know what it was earlier. I wasn't paying attention. Tomorrow is going to be the same temperature outside as it was today. 111 to 112 degree roughly. So I will do the same test again tomorrow but with hourly updates. Alright, I'll see you in the morning. Also, I have bought two of these. It is a Accurite thermometer from Walmart. And this is a bit inaccurate right this moment. It was in my pocket for a while, but I will be using this. I have two of them and I'll have them probed around the house. One of them will be by the air conditioner and maybe one of them will be, I don't know, in my bedroom. I don't know yet. It is 3 a.m. and the swamp cooler is blowing in 66% humidity and it is blowing in 70 degree air. Outside it is 78 degrees. In the room, right in the middle, getting air blown on it from the evaporative cooler is around 76 degrees. This is about 10 feet away. This is about 10 feet away from the thermometer that is 10 feet away from the swamp cooler, so about 20 feet away. It's about 80 degrees and the humidity is around 50%. It reads 5% higher than what the new ones say, so I'm going to assume this one is 5% off. At the end of the house, it is also 80 degrees, which this is where all of the air goes to leave the house. I wasn't sure if the fan was helping, so since that window does not have a screen, I removed the fan and opened up that window since it has a screen, and I'm going to see if it works just fine. It was before, but the fan didn't seem to help all that much. It's 82 degrees Fahrenheit in the bedroom at 42% humidity. The room not cooled by the swamp cooler is around 95 degrees. It's 11 a.m., it's 98 degrees outside, the swamp cooler is blowing in around... 82 degree air, 50% humidity. Thermometer about 10 feet away from the swamp cooler is around 80 degrees. Thermometer about 10 feet away from the other thermometer that is 10 feet away from the swamp cooler is around 80 degrees. Humidity is around 53%. At the end of the house where it's getting cooled, it is 80 degrees. In my bedroom, it is 82 degrees with 46% humidity. The room without the cooler is around 91 degrees. Hi, it's currently 1 p.m. It is 107 degrees Fahrenheit outside. The swamp cooler is blowing in approximately 86 degree air at 45% humidity. 10 feet away from the swamp cooler, it's around 86 degrees. 
10 feet away from the 10 feet away thermometer, it is around 86 degrees as well, and around 50% humidity. At the end of the house, it's only 84 degrees, maybe it hasn't quite got warmed up here yet. It was warming up in my room, so I turned the fan back on, and I have a fan down there blowing towards the computer where I've been watching videos so far today. In here, it's 88 degrees, 42% humidity. The room without the cooler is 94 degrees. Alright, it is currently 2 p.m. It is 109 degrees Fahrenheit outside. The swamp cooler is blowing in 86 degree air at 45% humidity. 10 feet away from the swamp cooler, it's around 86 degrees. 10 feet away from the thermometer that is 10 feet away from the swamp cooler, it's around 86 degrees and about 50% humidity. At the end of the house, it's around 86 or 87 degrees Fahrenheit. In the bedroom, it is 90 degrees Fahrenheit and 39% humidity. By the way, 90 degrees is the hottest it's been since I turned on the thermometer at midnight. 79 degrees is as cold as it got last night, so that's something neat. It will reset every day at midnight. The room without the swamp cooler is around 96 degrees. It's 3.30 p.m. It is 107 degrees outside. Just a few minutes ago, it was 104 degrees. It got cloudy, but now it's back to sunny again, which is pretty nice. Swamp cooler is blowing in 45% humidity at 86 degrees. The thermometer 10 feet away from the swamp cooler is also around 88 degrees Fahrenheit. The thermometer 10 feet away from the thermometer that is 10 feet away from the swamp cooler is around 88 degrees at around 48% humidity. Inside temperature is around 88 degrees Fahrenheit at the far end of the house. The bedroom is at 91 degrees at 38% humidity. The room without the swamp cooler is around 97 degrees. There was a few hour break between updates. It's now 6 p.m. I went to the store. Either way, it is 111 degrees Fahrenheit outside. The thermometer is 44% humidity, 86 degrees. Okay, sounds kind of warm. The thermometer 10 feet away from the air conditioner, I mean swamp cooler, is around 90 degrees. The thermometer 10 feet away from the thermometer that is 10 feet away from the swamp cooler is as well 90 degrees, and it's around 45% humidity in here. It's actually a little bit dry almost. The side of the house, or the end of the house, whatever you want to call it, it is 90 degrees as well. This is the far side of the house where the window is open. Well, the window is over there, but close enough. The bedroom is also the far side of the house, it's just the opposite side. Either way, it is 35% humidity in here, so it's getting on the low end, and 93 degrees. Pretty warm. The room without cooling is about 100 degrees, so even hotter. It's 7 p.m. It's still hot inside and outside. It's 98 degrees Fahrenheit outside, and the swamp cooler is blowing in 82 degree air at 51% humidity. It's still around 88 degrees inside. The thermometer 10 feet away from the thermometer that is 10 feet away from the swamp cooler still says 90 degrees Fahrenheit at around 49 roughly percent humidity. I have a fan on in the kitchen because I'm doing things in there and it's extremely hot. The thermometer at the end of the house is reading 90 degrees. The thermometer in the bedroom is reading 93 degrees at 37% humidity. Also, 93 degrees is the highest the thermometer has read since midnight last night. And the thermometer outside of the area cooled by the swamp cooler is reading approximately 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So the rest of the house is around 10 degrees cooler, if not cooler. Today it was slightly humid, sometimes cloudy, and extremely hot, so I think the swamp cooler did an alright job considering it is undersized significantly. It's 10.30pm, it is 82 degrees outside, and the swamp cooler is blowing in 77 degree air, so almost the same temperature as outside, and 67% humidity. 10 feet away from the swamp cooler, it's around 83 degrees. 10 feet away from the thermometer that is 10 feet away from the swamp cooler, it is around 87 degrees with about 50% humidity. At the far end of the house, it's around 86 degrees. In the bedroom, it's around 90 degrees at 45% humidity. The window is still open quite a bit, and then I turned on a box fan to help cool me down because I was quite warm. And I still am quite warm. And it's about 100 degrees in the room without the swamp cooler, so about, what is that, 15 or 18 degrees cooler in the rest of the house? Not bad, but still not great. 
Today was a little bit too warm for a swamp cooler, but it does do the job and it does take the edge off the extreme heat. Especially today, it was 111 degrees outside. The car recorded 120. Either way, it was extremely hot. Right now it is 11.58 p.m. And in around two minutes, this timer and the one inside the living room is going to reset. So in the past 12 hours, the highest humidity in this room was 51%. The lowest was 35%. The highest temperature was 93 degrees. The lowest temperature was 79 degrees. And for the swamp cooler, the coldest it's been is 70 degrees. The hottest it's been was 93 degrees. The highest humidity it's been was 71%. And the lowest humidity it's been was 25%. 25% was probably when I first plugged it in. Alright, and it has now reset. I wonder if there's an actual clock running inside that goes <laughs> every single second. That's a pretty interesting thought, but yeah, it just changed. Now, the highest is 75, lowest is 75, current is 75, highest and lowest humidity, and current humidity is 68. That's pretty neat. It's 80 degrees Fahrenheit outside. It's about 82 degrees inside the living room, around 10 feet away from the swamp cooler. It's about 85 degrees, about 10 feet away from the thermometer that is 10 feet away from the swamp cooler. And coming over to the humidity, it's around 50% in here. By the way, again, this thermometer overreads by about 5%. I'm assuming the new Accurite thermometer is more accurate than this old thermometer, which I don't even know where it came from. At the other side of the house, it is around 84 degrees. Inside the room that is away from the swamp cooler, it's around 98 degrees. Again, this room is not cooled. By the way, I've put the fan inside of that window to see if it will do anything. My hope is maybe it will pull as much air as possible out of there so this room cools down. I don't know. Everything I tried doesn't seem to help. Either way, what is the takeaway of this video? Well, evaporative coolers do work in somewhat humid climates if it is not that hot. It can help cool the house down and take the edge off. If you live in a hot desert and it's humid and extremely hot, no, this is a horrible option. Or let's say you live in, let's say, Miami, Florida. This is a horrendous option. Do not get a swamp cooler. It can be used as a dehumidifier, but it can't cool your house down. It will just bring in outside air less humid than what it is outside because the filters will go over and absorb all the water if you have the pump turned off. But if it's around 95 degrees maximum, maybe 100 degrees, it seems like a quite good option and it doesn't use all that much power. Again, it's best between about 10% humidity and maybe maximum 50%. Maybe a little higher, but 50 is about the max. My unit is a smaller one, and it's pulling 300 watts from the wall, roughly. It goes between 280 and 320. But I think the biggest takeaway to this video is you need to size your swamp cooler properly. Sure, on some days like today, it was blowing in 88 degree air during the hottest part of the day. It doesn't matter how powerful it is. If it's blowing in 88 degree air because of how physics works with how a swamp cooler functions, you can have a stronger fan and it's not going to help anything. But if it's actually not that hot outside, a stronger fan in the swamp cooler will help circulate the air all around the house so you don't have rooms that are a lot hotter than others because it has enough oomph to go over and blow air into those rooms with the windows open. With this lower end unit, I think this is actually the maximum rated size with all the rooms closed off besides two. I think this is actually at the limit right now. It's just barely enough. So don't even worry about oversizing your swamp cooler. Just oversize it. It will not hurt anything. If anything, oversizing your swamp cooler is a good thing because, well, it can circulate a lot more air. Well, circulate's not the right word. It can push a lot more moist, cool air through the house. But a smaller unit like this, which doesn't have that powerful of a fan, it's about like a 15,000 BTU air conditioner fan, it doesn't quite do enough. Either way, thank you for watching this video, and have a good day. At least it's a little bit cool in here. By the way, uh, th what it's been running on this entire time is high cool. Not low or anything other than that. It has been like maximum cool this entire time.